welcome to the third video of our MS Excel course. In the first video, we learned the various job opportunities that need MS Excel as a skill, along with how to access MS Excel for free. The second video was a complete MS Excel tutorial to convert a beginner into a pro. And in today's video, we're going to quickly look at 10 of the most commonly asked Excel interview questions, along with the answers. You might think that an interviewer might ask you, what is VLOOKUP, what is SUMIF, COUNTIF, but this happens rarely. They don't just give you a function name and ask, uh, tell me how this function works. Instead, they will specify what task they want to perform and ask you which Excel feature or function you will use to perform that task. Let's look at 10 such questions today. But before that, if you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button because it tells me that I should keep making more videos. Let's begin. <laughs> If at any point you don't understand the answers or syntax of a function, you can go back to video number two of this course, which is the complete MS Excel tutorial for beginners, where all of the features have been explained in detail. Let's get started with the first question. I have three columns called first, middle and last name. How do I merge these three columns to create one column called full name? We can do that using two functions, concat and text join. The syntax of the concat function is equal to concat followed by the cell addresses of the text you want to join and it simply combines the first, middle and last names together. As you can see, there's a problem with concat. It combines cell values without providing any delimiter that would separate one cell value with another. But to solve this, you can manually type in a space in your concat function between each word, just like this. The other function you can use is text join, which allows you to provide a delimiter. The syntax of text join is equal to text join followed by the delimiter you want, which in our case is space. True if you want to ignore empty cells followed by the cell addresses. And these are the two ways you can merge your first, middle and last names into a single column. In this answer, the interviewer doesn't just mention one function but talks about two, concat and text join, along with mentioning a limitation of concat and how to solve it. Now I want to split my full name column into two columns, first name and last name. How do I do that? Are the first and last names separated by a space or a comma? They are separated by a space. Is there a middle name for any of the names? They can be. Well, then it's best to use the text to column feature. To do that, select your cells, go to the data tab and click on text to columns. Choose delimited because you want to separate the names based on the space between them. Click on next. Specify the delimiter, which in our case is space. You can preview how your selected data will appear after the split using the preview box. This is where you can get a clear idea of the number of rows that also have a middle name. Click on next. Choose a data format, which is text in our case. Now this is important. Specify a new destination to avoid modifying your original column. Click on anywhere in the sheet where you want the result to be displayed. Click on finish. And that is how you split the full name into two or three columns. It's always a best practice to clarify and ask questions to the interviewer. In this instance, the interviewee asks the interviewer how the names are separated and if there is any possibility of having middle names. It shows that the interviewee is inquisitive and considers various scenarios before jumping to a solution. If you have a large data set and want the header row to be visible even when you scroll down, what MS Excel feature would you use? When you scroll down a large data set, it gets difficult to know what each column stands for because the header row, which has column names, has already disappeared. To make the header row visible, even when you scroll down, we can use the freeze pane feature in MS Excel. Click anywhere on your data set, go to the view tab in your ribbon and click on freeze first row. This freezes the header row and it will be visible even when you scroll down to the last row. To unfreeze, click on unfreeze pane. Similarly, you can click on freeze first column and it will lock the first column in place while you can scroll right to view the rest of the columns. And if you want to unfreeze, just click on unfreeze pane. We also have the option of freezing not just one row, but say top five rows or first two columns. It has been mentioned in the complete MS Excel tutorial for beginners video, which is the video two of this course. Do check it out. How can you prevent someone else from modifying a worksheet? If you want to protect a sheet, go to the review tab and click on the option that says protect sheet. Provide the appropriate permissions. Enter a password and click on OK. 
Now when someone tries to make changes to that sheet, they will receive an alert specifying that this sheet is protected. To make changes, they need to click on unprotect sheet and enter the password. Why am I getting a hash n slash a error when I'm using my VLOOKUP function? The hash n slash a error usually occurs when your VLOOKUP formula cannot find a referenced value. Does your data table have the value VLOOKUP is trying to find? Yes, my data has the value VLOOKUP is trying to find. Well, in that case, we might have made any of these two mistakes. The first mistake we can make is to not use absolute referencing. If we don't log the table array, which is the second parameter of our VLOOKUP function using a dollar sign, then the address keeps incrementing every time the formula is copied down. Like in this case, the table array address keeps leaving out one row each time the formula is copied down. And by the time we reach here, the table starts from the fifth row. But this book that we are trying to search is in the first row. And this is why VLOOKUP is throwing a hash n slash a error, even if the value exists because it has left out the first couple of books. To correct this, we just need to add a dollar sign in front of the table array address, the shortcut of which is F4. And then drag that formula to the rest of the cells and the error will disappear. The second mistake we can make is related to a VLOOKUP limitation. If our lookup value, which is the book name in this case, is not the leftmost column in our data set, then our VLOOKUP will throw the hash n slash error. To solve this, we just need to take the lookup column and insert it as the first column in the data set. After that, we need to modify the VLOOKUP function accordingly so that it references the correct table array and column index that we want returned. And there you go, our hash n slash error is resolved. Don't worry if you didn't understand this answer. I have explained absolute and relative referencing and how to use the VLOOKUP function with examples in this complete MS Excel tutorial for beginners. You're going to really enjoy learning from it. So make sure you check it out. In my data set, I have three columns, student names, subject and their scores. How do I find the sum of all the scores for a single student? You can easily do this using the sum if function. It performs a sum of values that meet your criteria. Let's say you want to find Harry's total. The syntax of the SUMIF function includes the range where you want to apply your criteria, which in our case is the student name. The next parameter is the criteria where you mention the name Harry. And the last parameter is the range you want to perform the SUM function on, which in our case is the scores column. And there you go, 90 plus 100 plus 180 is 270, which is the sum of all of Harry's scores. From this data, how do I highlight the scores that are greater than 80? You can do that using the conditional formatting feature of Excel. Select the cells where you want to apply the formatting on, which in our case is this scores column. Go to home tab, conditional formatting, highlight cell rules, choose greater than and enter cell value greater than 80 over here. You can change the color too, to say green, click on OK. And all the scores greater than 80 will be highlighted in green. By the way, I've explained conditional formatting in detail along with the you know rest of the features on the home tab in this complete MS Excel tutorial for beginners video. Do check it out. I have a list of subjects like history, chemistry, maths, science, etc. And the collective marks students have scored in each of these subjects. How do I find the total sum of scores of all of the subjects ending with Y? We can do that using the wildcards feature of MS Excel, particularly the asterisk wildcard combined with the sum if function. Asterisk represents any number of characters, which means asterisk followed by the character Y would represent history, chemistry, and even geography. Combine that with the sum if function and our formula would look like this. Equal sum if followed by the range where you want to apply the criteria to, which are our subject names, followed by the criteria, which is asterisk Y, and then the range where you want to perform the sum on which is our scores column. And there you go, you will get a sum of all of the subjects that end with Y. Can you tell me about the other wildcards present in Excel? We have question mark, which represents a single character. So SE question mark can mean SEE or SEA. And we have tilde. Think of it as an anti wildcard. Let's assume we want to search for the text Excel asterisk. But the use of an asterisk would make Excel return Excel or even the word excellent because asterisk is the wildcard that returns any number of characters. 
but if we place a tilde before the asterisk it would make excel read it as a character and not a wildcard wildcards are particularly useful when you're using this find and select feature right here to find text to replace them i've explained this feature in detail in this video so make sure you check it out i deleted something and now my excel is filled with hash uh, ref errors how do i prevent this from happening Hashtag REF for the reference error generally occurs when a formula has some incorrect cell references. It might happen if you accidentally delete any row, column or value which was being referenced by a formula. Let's look at this example. This formula is dividing column A with column B. But if I delete column B, it gets filled with the hash REF errors. One of the ways of avoiding this is to check if the column or the row you're deleting has any dependence. Select the cell you want to delete. Go to the formulas tab and click on trace dependence. A blue arrow will appear pointing to the cell which has the formula referencing this cell. This helps in deciding whether you can afford to delete a value or not. To remove this arrow, click on remove arrows. You can even click on the show formulas button to reveal all the formulas present in a worksheet all at once. This will help you quickly see which cells are being referenced by the formulas present in the worksheet. If I have a huge data set of digital marketing spend of a company, how can I make decisions for the next marketing campaign using this data? One of the features that helps you give insights about your data and answer some questions is the pivot table. Just as its name suggests, it can pivot or completely change the view, the structure of your data so that you can look at it from different angles and make decisions like in our example, how much budget to allocate to which platform in the next marketing campaign. Pivot tables help us analyze data, perform calculations, make comparison, observe trends, patterns, and all of this without modifying the original data itself. What criteria should your uh, data meet before you can create a pivot table? There are six. Our data needs to have correct column headings because these later become field names in the pivot table. There should be just one header row. Remove blank rows, columns, or cells. Format value fields as numbers instead of text. Format date fields as dates instead of text. And remove any duplicate values. Pivot tables are covered in detail in the complete MS Excel tutorial video on this channel, along with examples. The link is in the description. So those were the top 10 questions you can expect in your MS Excel interview round. Some other questions that you can get asked might be related to charts, removing duplicate values, text functions, different types of errors, sorting and filtering, functions and formulas, all of these topics and more are covered in this video. I hope you have as much fun watching this video as I had while making it. And if you're preparing for your next interview, feel free to check out our interview preparation course on this channel that helps you answer some of the most commonly asked behavioral questions like, tell me about yourself, what are your strengths and weaknesses, explain the gap in your employment and more. And this course is on YouTube. I have left its link in the description. And as usual, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon and check out the other career and finance videos on my channel that are well-researched, crisp, and to the point. I'm Toskeen, this is The Urban Fight, and I'll see you in the next video.